So I was in Milwaukee uh, with the Red Letter Media guys, and they were talking about people randomly commenting on their clothes or shit like that in the video and saying, you guys are famous. Like, you should like look better. You guys look like idiots. You're wearing white socks. And I was talking about how everybody makes fun of my hair and the way I dress and people say I'm a hipster and a douchebag and all this shit. But we both agreed that we are the same level of famous, which are, we're the level of famous where some people will get mad if you, if I refer to myself as famous and then other people will get mad if I say, no, I'm not famous. I am certainly not famous. I think I'm like minorly notable to a specific group of people. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about because I want to tell you guys a story uh, about how fun it is to be famous. Uh, it, it's, it's a short story, but bear with me. So two years ago, I was living in New York editing my still as of yet unreleased movie, Me, Him, Her. Now, I was having a good time in New York, but I barely knew anyone there. So whenever any of my friends were in town or anything like that, I would get like desperate to hang out with them. And I had a friend, a screenwriter friend named Emma, whose last name will uh, remain off the record. And she came to New York and she was at the Bowery Hotel and she said, Max, I know you're living in New York. Come to the Bowery. Me and a bunch of my screenwriter friends are hanging out. I was like, screenwriter friends? Because I almost never, I have a very sort of closed friend group. I don't really hang out that much with other screenwriters unless I'm working with them uh, because I'm not from the TV side, so I don't meet a lot of them because we're screenwriter social circles are strange. But so I, uh, so I go to the Bowery Hotel, I'm thrilled. And when I get there, everybody's drinking, everybody's been drinking, everyone's having a great time. It's mainly girls, a gay guy and uh, a younger guy who I don't know. And when I introduce myself, I sort of say, I'm Max, but I don't really get a chance to talk about it. So they're all talking about stuff they've read as samples. Uh, at first, they're talking about like uh, Coachella and that they don't want to go to it. But then they start talking about scripts they've read as samples. And the younger guy says, have you guys read the Max Landis script, Good Time Gang? And I was like, like, I couldn't believe that it had been brought up. And I was so excited. But of course, I was like, no, I not tell anyone that that's me. And so uh, one of the girls had, none of the other ones had, and she was like, yeah, it's really funny. And I was like, oh, they like my script. And then one of the other girls who shall remain nameless, uh, who writes sketch and comedy is like, yeah, like I like that script or, or not. I don't think she even read the script. She was just like, that guy's an asshole. And I was like, hmm. And I went, why do you say that? And she said, oh, I met him at Comic-Con this year. He's a total douchebag. He's just a fucking arrogant, fucking up his own ass. Ugh, it was terrible. He slapped my ass. And all the girls were like, oh, that's horrible. Meanwhile, Emma's looking at me across the table like this. Like she, like the beginning of Inglorious Bastards. Like she's under the floor. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. That happened at Comic-Con this year. And she was like, yeah, he's just, you know, he's one of those guys who thinks he's a lot smarter than he is and thinks he's a lot cooler than he is. And, you know, I just, I don't know. He just made a really bad impression. And like, you meet a lot of guys like that in LA. I don't know if you've been to LA. I'm from LA, you fucking idiot. And so like, you know, she thinks I'm some like screenwriter from New York guy. And I said, it's a crazy story. That really sucks. She was like, yeah, it, it, it sucked. But you know, you get that a lot as a woman. And I said, yeah, but the craziest thing about that story and the thing that just blows my mind is that I'm Max Landis and I wasn't at Comic-Con this year. And in my life, I think I've encountered maybe three true dead silences where like the script says there is a dead silence in the movie of the universe. Everyone stopped talking. And I went, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking Max Land. I'm out of here. I'm sorry. I'm leaving. And I was so upset. I felt so sh shaken. It was like, it was terrifying for, for, for this to have been said. Because how many times has that conversation happened and I wasn't there? And, you know, when people online, you know, like say you're an asshole or like message you stuff or Red Letter Media or whoever... Ariana has like 40 billion people telling her she's a slut a day and she just doesn't hear it because she's 40 billion is too many. So she's, and she has like 50 gazillion saying, we love you. I don't have that many saying I, I love you uh, more these days, I guess. But like, 
it, it just makes you realize how out of control your image becomes. And that's me with like my tiny 0.001% of fame. Uh, my, my, little, my little cult of people who like YouTube and Superman and wrestling um, and Chronicle and American Ultra. Uh, it's so cool, by the way. Thank you, everyone, messaging me that you're finding American Ultra on, uh, uh, on home video. Where were you? No, I'm kidding. Um, and I just thought it was an interesting story to share because when someone says something about you, it sucks to be gossiped about, but imagine being gossiped about by people you'll never even meet. And imagine having a lie told about you that you will never be able to disprove. It sucks.